Hi everyone, welcome to the third edition of Superstars Pride. Today we are going to be talking about Sharice Davids. Um, so Sharice Davids, um, she is the first openly LGBTQ Native American elected to the U.S. Congress, the first openly lesbian person elected to the U.S. Congress from Candace, and she was one of the first two Native American women elected to Congress. Um, the other woman elected was Deb Holland from New Mexico. So the book I have is called Sharice's Big Voice, and it was actually written by Sharice David herself, along with Nancy K. Mays. And it was illustrated by Joshua Mengxing Hawes Steckley. This is a picture of me and my mom the night I was elected to Congress. When I see this, I think how amazing it is I won. I think how amazing it is I even tried to win. When I was young, I never thought I'd be in Congress. And I never thought I'd be one of the first Native American women in Congress. During the races, I learned from a lot, I heard from a lot of doubters. They thought I couldn't win based on what I look like, who I love, and where I started. But here's the thing. Everyone's path has obstacles, some more than others. Everyone faces challenges and people who doubt them. Sometimes we even doubt ourselves. Everyone's path looks different. Let me tell you a little bit about mine. So let's see what we can learn about Sharice Davis. When I was young, I liked to talk a lot. I still do. I talked to my family, my friends, my friends' families. I talked to neighbors, people shopping in the store, people working in the store. I wanted to know about people. Did they move often? Had they ever seen martial artist Bruce Lee kick through a wall? And did they also hate onions on their pizza? Yeah, I'm not crazy about onions on my pizza. My mom likes to talk too. Watching her, I saw how a good conversation can make people happy. You start as strangers, but then you share ideas and learn about each other. Maybe you learn they move four times. They love Bruce Lee. And unlike me, they don't care if their pizza comes from onions. I still care a lot. So anyone else like to talk a lot, different people, learn things about them? Sometimes I got in trouble for talking too much. Okay, more than sometimes. My teacher even moved me by her desk, but that didn't stop me. Sharice, she finally said, move out to the hall to finish your work. You can't talk out there. But she was wrong. I just talked to whoever passed by. One day, a boy in my class grew upset. So upset he bolted out of the room. Sharice, my teacher said, can you get him to come back? When I found him outside, I did what I always did. I started talking. Then he started talking and I listened. That was all my friend needed and we went back to class. I was getting better at listening. I learned that listening gives people room to be themselves, to feel angry or sad or happy. I discovered that the best way to learn about people is to listen to them. That's very smart. It's always good to listen. Especially if you have a friend who's upset, they just might need to talk. My friends at school were confused about me because I looked different from them. They always asked, what are you, Sharice? So one day I asked my mom, what am I? You're Native American, my mom said. After, she told me that wasn't a nice question to ask people. Yeah, that she's, her mom's right. That's not a nice question to ask someone. We're members of the Ho-Chunk Nation, she said. 
I learned my mom was removed from her family and told to pretend she wasn't Ho-Chunk. Our nation is mostly in Wisconsin, where my aunts and cousins live. We're related to the Winnebago tribe in Nebraska. We used to be all one people, but long ago, the U.S. government forced tribes to move away from their homelands. I also learned we call ourselves people of the big voice, which obviously fits me well. So, you see someone who looks different, it's kind of not nice to, you know, make comments on their appearance. Unless you want to tell them, you look nice today. It's always nice to compliment someone. My big voice came in handy every time I started a new school. My mom was in the army for 20 years. So we moved back and forth between Germany, Kansas, and Missouri. At every school, I made friends by talking and listening. I knew a good conversation could break down walls, just like Bruce Lee. In Germany, a soldier taught me martial arts for free. I wanted to keep taking lessons when we returned home, but my mom couldn't afford them. So I watched Bruce Lee movies all the time. He could do a roundhouse kick, a palm strike, and a flying arm bar. I ran around the house punching and kicking, trying to copy him. While my mom was being strong and fierce at work, I was strong and fierce at home. So if you don't know who Bruce Lee is, he was very talented. He was very good at martial arts. He was also in some movies. When I was 13, I went to my mom's work for a special ceremony. She had earned a promotion to a higher level in the Army Sergeant First Class. My mom asked me to pin the special sergeant patch on her uniform. I watched her stand at attention in her Army uniform, an American flag behind her. I felt so proud. It took years for her to earn the promotion. I knew how hard she worked. And I knew I wanted to be like her when I grew up. Focused and fierce, confused and kind, or confident and kind, a person who served others. So her mom seems pretty cool. I learned how to work hard by watching my mom. I, told, I sold newspaper subscriptions and worked in a piso restaurant. No onions on mine. Later, I paid for college by working in a fast food restaurant, making burgers, cleaning bathrooms, and calming upset customers. I learned you can't always fix someone's complaint when you're out of mustard. You're out of mustard, but you can listen. And you can actually do something to make them feel better, like free ice cream. In college, I used part of each paycheck for martial arts classes so I could finally learn to fight like Bruce Lee. Do Zitsu, do Zitsu, Taekwondo, Kaporia. I could land a punch and defend against a palm strike. But more important, I learned that when I worked hard at something, I got better at it, even if I couldn't see it right away. So yeah, if you want to learn something new, you can't give up. You have to keep trying because, you know, trying and practicing, that's how you get better. Hey, Giles. I trained every day for years. Finally, I was ready for my first mixed martial arts fight. I was nervous, but I knew I was prepared. Standing in the ring, I thought about my training all those hours practicing, and then the bell rang. We met in the middle of the ring, and I pounced on my opponent. It took less than a minute. I won my first fight, and with my favorite move, a triangle hold. The crowd cheered. With my arm raised high, I realized it felt good to win, but it felt even better knowing I won because I worked so hard. You know how that feels, right? Yeah, have you ever won something? You maybe on, on a sport team, you practice hard, or maybe at school you studied super hard and you got 100% on a test. 
because hard work does pay off. You just got to keep trying, studying, practicing. At the same time, when I was fighting in the ring, I started a journey with a different kind of battle. I decided to enroll in law school so I could work to make our US laws more just and fair. I didn't know anyone who was both Native American and an attorney. I didn't even know any attorneys, but martial arts taught me not to be afraid of new challenges. A friend told me about a program for Native Americans preparing to be lawyers, and I signed up. It was the first time in my life I sat in a classroom surrounded by Native people. It felt powerful. No one in the room asked, Sharice, what are you? So now she wants to be a lawyer. You have to study hard for that and be very smart. Once I had my law degree, I worked for a big law firm, but it didn't feel right. It didn't feel like my path. So I moved to a reservation in South Dakota. I saw that my native friends there didn't have the kind of opportunities I had in Kansas. So I used my legal skills to help them start businesses. I learned a lot living there and my life is better for it. That's nice to use her smarts to help other people. It's always good to help other people when you can. Working with Native American tribes, I saw that the people who made up the American government don't always see how the laws they make impact the people they represent. I wanted to change that, so I went to work in the White House. There I saw how laws were made, but I didn't see people who looked like my family I didn't see people who'd grown up like me. What if that changed, I wondered? What if everyone's voice was heard by the people making our laws? That's when I made a bold, brave idea that would need my big voice, my ability to listen, and my ability to take a punch. Turns out, a lot of punches. Can you guess what I'm talking about? I decided to run for US Congress. Our government needed different voices and more people who would listen. I had doubters, people who didn't think I could win or that I should even run. But do you think I listened to them? What do you think? In the beginning, the campaign team was small enough to fit around a kitchen table, but we walked through neighborhoods, but as we walked through neighborhoods, more people joined. Our campaign made room for everyone. We listened to everyone, people who couldn't afford to see a doctor, moms whose jobs didn't pay enough to give their child more opportunities. Every child who'd ever been asked, what are you? In our campaign, we listen to every voice. Oh, that's good because everyone's voice deserves to be heard, right? The night of the election, I hoped we would win. I knew how hard everyone had worked on the campaign. I knew how important it was for their voices to be heard. I watched the election results on TV in a small room with my best friend, my family, my campaign team and my partner. We laughed, talk, talked, and ate macaroni and cheese. When the results came in, I'd won by a lot. I walked out of the small room into a ballroom and saw the smiling faces of all the people who helped out on the campaign. As they cheered and clapped, climbed onto the stage with my mom, and we lifted our arms. We did it. I felt like everyone Every voice was rising up with me. And see the TV saying, Sharice Davids wins. Growing up, I never would have guessed my path would lead to Congress. I didn't know that I would be one of the first Native American women in Congress and the first lesbian representative from Kansas. Everyone's path is different. And wherever yours takes you, maybe the lessons I learned can help. 
Be open to challenges. Work hard and you'll learn a lot. Listen to people, but not the doubters. Use your big voice to fight for your belief, beliefs. And always remember, you deserve to be seen and heard. That's very good advice. And then there's an author's note from her. I'm gonna read this a little bit for you. Hello, I'm glad you're here reading our story. I say our story because even though the details about my life, the details are about my life, this is everyone's story. Mine, yours, our dog Nala's. Okay, maybe not hers. I like this story, Steve. She's very funny, isn't she? Here's what our hope Here's what I hope our story conveys, that each of us has our own path. And the most important thing in the world is to be true to your journey. The journey is going to have ups and downs, people who doubt you and people who cheer you on. Focus on the supporters, be grateful for their help. I am. I also hope you realize the power in your choices. As you know by now, I went to law school. Often people have said to me, I bet law school changed your life. But the truth is that the school didn't change my life. My decision to go to law school changed my life. My choice changed my life. Your choices will change yours as well. And law school may not be your choice. Your choice may be working with animals or learning magic tricks or being a singer. The point is you get to decide what success means for you. That's your choice and only yours. And remember that whatever your path is, you're changing the world just by being here. It took me a while, but I'm glad I love, I'm really glad I found my big voice. If you haven't already, I hope you find yours too, because I can't wait to hear what you have to say. Your friend, Charisse. And then she also added here, also remember to take naps. You're going to need a lot of energy to change the world. Then I think this is a picture of her and her mom when she was a little girl. Whoops. There. Picture. The end. So the craft for today is a sunflower. And you might be asking, what does a sunflower have to do with Sharice Davids? Well, she's the representative from Candace and the Candace State Flower is, the Candace State Flower is a sunflower. So yeah, cause it was kind of hard to figure out a craft for martial arts. And again, just a reminder, you can pick up all the crafts for this series at the North Syracuse location. They come all together in a brown paper bag. And then again, these videos, I'm showing you how to make them. And there's also the bonus craft of the rainbow scratch bookmark, which I'll be showing you in the Zoom party next Saturday. So I hope to see everyone there for that. So there's three parts to this. It's gonna be this yellow thing the green straw, and then this is packaged together. So you can open this, make sure you have everything. And this actually does have a little set of directions. And so one of the things I wanna say is this is a very small piece that's hiding in the bag. It like just fell out on me on my legs. <laughs> so just open it carefully, make sure you don't lose it. Um, when I was testing this craft out with my nieces, um, we actually lost this for a second and then I had to tape it. And then of course, after the tape, I found this piece. So yeah, it's very small, but it helps hold things together. Okay. So yeah, and then you also have this paper with the directions. So the first part is you're gonna undo this and you want to do it carefully so it doesn't rip and it's going to hang too which is cool and Ta -da! and this is where you need this little clip because it's going to hold together but like i said if it falls out and you can't find it you can always use tape So it just holds it together. Well, it's gonna be like that. 
Okay. And then, so these, everything in here is sticky. So let's work on the face first. So it comes with, so there's the face, the part that has the two little eyebrows. And then the two eyes and the mouth. So I think the eyes are the hardest part to get the sticky off. But you can do it there. And then you just put it right on. There's one eye. And then, yeah, I don't have the nails to get these off, but I'm trying. And two eyes. And then, of course, every sunflower needs its smile. There. And then, actually, one of my nieces. It's like it needs a nose. And so she used the marker and put on a nose and it was really cute. Okay, so these parts both come off and they're gonna stick together. No, oh, no, that was a lie. <laughs> That's a good thing those were in directions for this. So yeah, the flowers are actually gonna stick on here. And then this is gonna Stick with this in the back. I'll show you what I mean. These are really big googly eyes, aren't they? So this is a sticker. It's gonna come right off. And it's very sticky, which is good because we want it to stick here. And again, you wanna make sure that this part that's Hanging, it's like that because you well you want it to hang. I guess. Okay, so that is the front. So this piece is the back, and you're, this is where you're going to take your green straw, and you're going to stick the green straw on the sticky part. That way you can hold it, and it's also access the stem. And then you're going to take this, and you're going to put it to the other side. It doesn't really, oh, doesn't need to be even. Doesn't need to match. Because this is just so the stem can stick to it. So yeah, you can hold it like this. You can hang it like that. And so there's also leaves, because flowers have leaves, right? So there's four leaves each. I'll show you how to do those. So the leaves, the idea of them is you're gonna stick them like this on your straw or your stem, I mean, it's supposed to be a stem. So, you know, it's gonna be kind of hard to get even, so don't worry too much if it's not. Okay. So, one side here, and then Oh, I did pretty good. Little overlap. Let's see, so you got your first leaf on and you can put it anywhere on the screen part you want. Now we're gonna do the next leaf. And again, the same thing. If it's not perfect, don't worry, mine's not. I'm trying, right? It's just a fun, pretty craft that you can hang up at home. And leaf two. So there it is. There's your sunflower craft. <laughs> so um, again, these crafts can all be picked up at the North Syracuse location. You can do it as curbside or you can just come into the library. We're open without appointments now. And just say you want the Superstars of Pride craft bag and it has um, the Alton John craft, the RuPaul craft, and then this one, Trace David's. And then, as I mentioned before, for the Zoom party, there's the rainbow scratch bookmark, which is like your bonus craft. And again, I really hope to see everyone there for the pride party. So yeah, hopefully I'll see you around at the library.